Hi everyone, so this is the next video in the Baal series, uh, Mystery of Babylon and the Antichrist in Revelation. So I covered um, early, earlier parts of the Bible, the Old Testament, in earlier videos, but um, this relates to Mystery of Babylon, Daniel 2, uh, Nebuchadnezzar's dream uh, about Babylon and the world empires. Um, so this is what it says, Thou, O king, sawest, and um, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. The image's head was of fine gold, his uh, breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet um, part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till... Uh, thou sawest till that a stone was cut out with hands which smote the image upon the feet upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them into pieces then was the iron the clay the brass the silver and the gold broken to pieces together and became like chaff in the summer thresh, threshing floors and the wind carried them away and there was no place found for them and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth this is the dream, and we will tell the interpreta interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, o, o king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of the heaven he, hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another, and a third, sorry, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh into pieces and, and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break to pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of the potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it the strength of iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be strong, partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in, and in these days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall be, but it shall break in in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break into piece, in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come, come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. So um, this kind of represents all of Mystery Babylon. Um, because it starts with the Babylonian kingdom, the head of gold, and then it goes through all of the successive um, empires of the world of, in history, um, up to the Roman Empire, and um, which was, you know, the iron and the clay. Um, and the, you've got the, the revived Roman Empire, which is... You know, we, we're still in the Roman Empire, uh, or the revived Roman Empire. The, you know, it's it's the West. Um, uh, since since Rome was ruling from Rome, um, and then it sort of disintegrated and and fell apart a bit. Um, it's been uh, countries out of that empire that have continued to to rule or you know to be the majority the not the majority the 
the biggest empire in the world, you know, like we've uh, we've had basically anything in Europe. Um, you got the British, which had their rule, and then um, America is the most recent. Um, but it's generally all come out of the Roman Empire. Sorry, I'm not the best person to explain all that stuff. At least I haven't I haven't got it all down enough to explain it properly. Um, but I'm sure you've heard it before. So um, basically, we're, we're, this is still Babylon. It's you know the head was the head of gold was the Babylonian Empire, but it's all part of the same image, the same big um, conglomerate, conglomeration, um, and it will be destroyed. And um, and then the next, you know, the kingdom of of Christ um, will reign forever after this. But um, so that, yeah, let's look at Mystery Babylon, Revelation seventeen, and they came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show the show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-coloured beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet colour and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And upon her head... Her forehead was the name written, Mystery Babylon the Great, the Mother of Harlots, the Abominations of the Earth. Um, so up to here we've got, um, you know, she's, she's riding the beast. Um, she sits on many waters, which is many, which is the people, the nations of the earth. Um, sort of sing, sitting as the ruler, um, and all the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and they've all um, been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So, you know, the intoxicating um, deception, um, witchcraft, um, it's it's not just religious, it's, um, you know, power hungry and ruling the world, um, financial, um, it's all of those things, um, power, money, religion, um, the world has, you know, drunk of one of their fornication, and, um, so yeah, it's, it's not just, it's not just Rome, it's not just the original Babylonian Empire, it's it's all of the world's empires up to up to now and um including well America, America's come out of the European, you know, they came out of um England, I suppose. And so it's America as well. Um, sorry, I'm not explaining things very well today. Um, so, yeah, she has names of blasphemy. Sorry, no, that's the beast. Um, but yeah, the, the beast is the Antichrist, and he has names of blasphemy. So that's a characteristic we'll, we'll note for the Antichrist. He's got a big mouth, and he likes to say grand things about himself. And he likes to blaspheme God. Um, and yes, verse 4 is interesting. The, the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, which is the colours of the Catholic Church. Um, and yeah, she's got the golden cup. 
um, in her hand, which is full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So all the detestable things that are against God, that's what she's been giving to the nations to drink. Um, and her name, Mystery Babylon, the Great, the Mother of Harlots and the Abominations of the Earth. Um, just a quick look at the Greek, Strong's uh, definition, Mysterion, so mystery. Um, I mean, we've got the mystery of Christ, uh, which, you know, there's a lot in the in the New Testament about the mystery of Christ, and that, that simply just means something that hadn't been previously revealed and, you know, made known unto us, the, the church, um, about, you know, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And, but it's, it's also defined as... Uh, um, to say here, a secret or mystery through the idea of silence imposed by initiation into religious rites. Um, so this really fits well with what we know about religions like Freemasonry um, and, you know, all occult. It, it's all about hidden things um, and in, as you get into them, you um, have the secrets revealed to you. Uh, so yeah, the occult and also the Gnostic religions, that's also a thing, um, hidden knowledge. Um, so it's interesting that it's called Mystery Babylon, but it could also just be, um, I haven't revealed this fully to you before, this is what this Babylon, this whore is about. Um, Maybe it's a double meaning. Uh, so verse 6, And I saw a woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the, the martyrs of Jesus, um, which represents, you know, blood of the saints, Old Testament, and blood of the martyrs of Jesus, New Testament. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore did thou, didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carried her, carrieth her, um, which has seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit to go into perdition, and they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of, of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Um, so just quickly, the uh, woman drunk, drunk with the blood of the saints and the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. So this is, you know, all of history. Um, any any believer killed in the name of um, of religion. Um, so you know, it, this could be the back in Israel. Israelite time, um, when the uh, priests of Baal came and did things, or in you know Jezebel killed um, killed Naboth, and you know things like that, as well as you know New Testament saints killed by uh, either in the uh, um, the time of Paul and all of that. You know some of them were martyrs. Like, um, who was it? Simon? I don't know. Someone was a martyr. There were lots of martyrs. And then you've got the um, Inquisitions, loads of martyrs. And you've still got martyrs going on today um, in, in many countries. Um, so the beast, the uh, sorest, so this is always a bit mind-boggling. Um, was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. perdition. Um, so this implies that the beast, the Antichrist, is a, a being that already, already exists or existed in the past 
and at the time of the writing of this was not not around if you know what I mean um, and then will be again and um, that's because it, the beast comes out of the bottomless pit as we find out in Revelation 9 and the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key to the bottomless, bottomless pit and he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a, a smoke out of the pit uh, as the smoke of great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and unto them was given power as the power of scorpions scorpions of the earth have power and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit whose name is in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon so this is the beast that was um, and is not and will be or uh, and yet is um, so Abaddon, Apollyon uh, once was and then was not and then but then is again um, is actually Apollyon is Apollo so that oh I've, yeah so son of Zeus in other words Baal Nimrod uh, and that I should have written this down it's actually you know the concept of Tammuz who you know Tammuz and Nimrod are kind of Kind of the same thing, except well, it's 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 like the Trinity, you know, the Father and the Son. They are one. Um, um, Zeus and sorry, uh, um, Nimrod and and Tammuz are kind of like representing the same kind of thing, but um, you know, we have the Father and the Son in Zeus and Apollo as well. Um, so it goes back to that and therefore um, the beast that comes out of the abyss uh, is essentially Baal or Nimrod and um, that is the Antichrist. So it's like a resur uh, well the, the resurrection part sort of comes a bit bit after this um, I guess the spirit the the demon comes out of of um, out of the pit and then in, uh, basically possesses the human who is the Antichrist and this human uh, supposedly according to the Bible um, ha has a wound to death and then sort of resurrects um, in a very Christ-like kind of way <laughs> or not Christ-like really but you know anti-Christ pseudo-Christ kind of a way um, so yeah there's that that's the connection um, so yeah and the Greek god Apollo is associated with the symbol of the locust in Greek mythology just as Apollyon is associated with, is the king over the locusts that come out of the bottomless pit um, in Revelation 9. So that's very interesting. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I can't remember. Anyway, I'll just move on. I'm not thinking too clearly today. Um, so going on in this chapter and here is the mind which hath wisdom the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth and there are seven kings five are fallen and one is and the other is not yet come and when he cometh he must continue a short space and the beast that was and is not even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition um, Okay, so we've got the seven heads or seven mountains. And the mountains 
these are the, the kingdoms um, from Nebuchadnezzar, his dream. Um, so the woman sits on all of those kingdoms. So it's essentially, that's, that's the Babylonian. Mystery Babylon is sits on all of those kingdoms from the actual Babylonian kingdom through to the revived Roman Empire. Um, so she sits on those, and um, yeah, the of the of the seven kings, five are fallen. So at the time of of writing this, um, that was back when the Roman Empire was was ruling. So five kingdoms had fallen before that, and one is the Roman Empire, and the other is not yet come, the revived Roman Empire. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. So the revived Roman Empire continues a short space, and the beast that was and is not, and even is he's the eighth, and is of the seven. So, um, you know, the, the beast comes out of the revived Roman Empire. So he's of the seven, um, but he is the eighth because he's the next uh, kingdom, I suppose, with his beast system. And he goes into petition. So going on, and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, um, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So that's future, that hasn't happened yet. Um, these have one mind and shall give the power and strength unto the beast and they shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful and he saw uh, saith unto me the waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast um, these shall hate the whore, and they shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and to give their kingdom unto the beast, un until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is the, that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So it's, a lot of people just want to literally say, okay, Babylon's, a city is going to be rebuilt in in, in the tribulation, and uh, then it'll get destroyed in the tribulation. Um, no, <laughs> that's not. That ignores a whole lot of stuff um, in the Bible to come to that conclusion. Um, it's it's the current world system, and it will be destroyed. And it's the ten kings um, who destroy it. Um, unknowingly because God makes them do it um, but they think they're doing it because they hate they hate Babylon um, they hate the current world system um, and then they give their power to the beast um, before he sets up his system his rule um, so yes yeah, she this woman She's a great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. So she is, you know, that Nebuchadnezzar image. Um, so Mystery Babylon is the world empires culminating in the, the revived Roman Empire. Oops, wrong word. Um, it consists of government, the financial system, and religion. I mean, we focus a lot on religion so far, but you can see um, it is just the whole thing, the whole package, um, government and financial. And you can see um, how we're heading towards a one world government, the, the big great reset, um, financial reset. It's all heading towards um, what will be the B system, but we're not there yet. Um and this system that we're currently in will be destroyed. Uh, we may not see that happen. I hope we don't. Because uh, it does happen either at the beginning or part way into the tribulation period. Um, 
yeah, it's too hard to figure that one out. I kind of, I kind of think it might be. I kind of think it lines up with the sixth seal, which is just before. You know, the the beast comes and sets up his thing. Uh, but yeah, th uh, that's totally. That's not what I'm talking about here. It's not my intention to go into speculation about when things like that will happen. Um, so going on to Revelation 18. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So there you can see the financial side of it. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. And we hear that, you know, very often, but come out of her, my people. Get out of that. Um, religious system which um, for us w what we need to get out of is the institutional church system because it's full of Babylonian influence um, and it's not good um, for her sins have reached under heaven and God hath remembered her iniquities reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled uh, filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For well, strong is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And just a note that when they say in one hour, it it uh, basically means a short time. It doesn't literally mean one hour, 60 minutes. Um, it, it just means a short space of time. Um, and the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth the merchandise any more. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet. Interesting, the purple... And scarlet there again, and all thine wood, thy thy I don't know what that word is, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of um, most precious wood, and of brass, and of iron, and of marble, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men, and the fruits of thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off in the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, the great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour... So great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster and all the ship and the companies in ships and sailors and many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, the great city wherein were made uh, rich all that the ships all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness, for in one hour she is made desolate, is she made desolate, 
Um, rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, for God hath avenged you on her. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more in thee, at all in thee, and no craftsman, and whosoever, what, whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee, and the light of the candle shall no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So with that description you can see a lot of financial references um, as well as music and entertainment, which makes me think of Hollywood. Um, yeah, a lot. And, you know, just the goods and services um, that, um, you know, the world loves to have. Um, obviously, a lot of stuff is made in China, but America produces um, a lot of a lot of stuff that the rest of the world consumes. Um, and certainly they do in terms of music and, and movies, TV. Um, and obviously the content of that stuff is, is very Babylonian and disgusting. Um, so yes, and just generally in Mystery Babylon was found in her the blood of prophets and the saints again, and all that was slain upon the earth. Um, and this sort of continues into Revelation 19. And after these things I heard a great voice of much people in heaven saying, Alleluia, salvation and glory and honour and power unto the Lord our God. For true are righteous for true and righteousness sorry, for true and righteous are his judgments, for he hath judged the great whore which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and hath avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said Alleluia and her smoke rose up for ever and ever. Um, so, Mystery Babylon, um, yeah, I've just talked about the financial, entertainment, music, um, government, uh, so, you know, the ruling um, sort of empires, um, the dominant um empires of of the of history uh but also religious and uh yeah we've got um i don't know you things like when you think about prosperity um what's the word prosperity christianity <laughs> i'm having a bad time today can't think of right terms to say um anyway you know what i mean uh that kind of thing comes to mind it's like it's like an invention of the americans um who are the dominant power in the world today or at least have been on their way down now um yeah their version of of christianity is the institutional church um uh, you know, Europe had the sort of the the Roman Catholic version, um, and then the early Reformation turning into um, the various Protestant Christianity religions, institutional church, and then came to America and turned into this big, enormous um, financial <laughs> institution. Um, preying on on believers um, or people who who 
you know, looking for God and finding false um, false gospels everywhere um, and demanding their money and their time um, to build up big, powerful institutions for the power-hungry um, pastors. Um, yeah, it's just, it all just, that's all Babylon. It's just everywhere. And it needs to be destroyed. Um, okay, so quickly, the Antichrist. Uh, just a few things from Revelation. I thought this was interesting. Um, Revelation 6, And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. So this is about the Antichrist um, at the beginning of the tribulation uh, being revealed. And then Revelation 19, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was true and faithful, was faith, sorry, was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. So this is about Jesus Christ, um, and it's at the end of the tribulation. So the like book ends these two, and they both sit on a white horse, and they both both make war. And they both have a crown. Very interesting. And then finally, Revelation 13. And I saw um, one of his heads, as it were, wounded to death. And his wound, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who was like unto the beast? Who was able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that that dwell in heaven. So that's the Antichrist. He is, he pretends to be Christ. Um, and he speaks great blasphemies against God and against his people. Um, especially he'll do that after you know he's beheaded all of these believers um, who have gone obviously to heaven, and he will still be speaking blasphemies against them um, while they're you know, gone, up in heaven. And you probably do the same about um, us who have gone in the rapture. Um, so that's that's his characteristic. He blasphemes God. He's very boastful about himself. Um, and um, he's pretending to be Christ. Um, and, yeah, so I will do... And more, some couple more videos, I think. Um, starting to wrap it up. I don't really know exactly what's next, but there will be more. But yeah, this gives you a good idea of of Mystery Babylon and the whole system and the Antichrist coming out of it, and the fact that he Antichrist is linked all the way back to Nimrod um, and Baal. Um, you know, the son, he is basically like Tammuz, resurrected son of Nimrod, um, who is Baal. And, um, yeah, and, and he's trying to be like Christ. It's like he's the resurrected from the dead, um, come back to life, um, Antichrist. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I'm not talking too well today, so I hope that helps. I'm certainly not going to record this again. I'm moving on. Okay, thank you. Bye.